This lesson will focus entirely on color grading and on color balance tool. So the color balance tool can be found here under the color tab. And if you scroll down, you have the color balance tool visible here. So in general, the color balance tool is all about color and intensity. But before we dive deep into the features of the tool, I want to show you how you can improve the workspace when you are color grading your images. So first of all, I would select the image that you want to color grade and then hit Command B to get rid of the browser. Next, you can pull out your color balance tool and you can enlarge it. So that way, when you will be working on the selected luminosity range, you will have much better precision. So for example, now I'm in the mid-tones and I have much more precision because I can see clearly what I'm doing here. I can work in a really precise way. So I can manipulate with the color wheel, I can access the sliders and simply when the tool is larger, it is easier to do this. And alternatively, you can create dedicated workspace for color grading and I would encourage you to do so. So I will quickly show you how to do this. So we are going to right click here inside the tool tab area and let's pick add tool tab and select the last option custom tool tab. So we will create a new custom tool tab. So let's quickly rename it. And let's hit add the tab. So with the default width, it is not visible. I need to make it a little bit wider. So now I have access to my custom tab and it is empty. I'm going to quickly add here the layers tool at the very top and four times the color balance tool. To do this, you need to right click inside the tab and select add tool first layers. And now four times we are going to add color balance. So now the second one, color balance, the third one and the fourth one. It doesn't matter where you're clicking as long as you are right clicking inside the top. So we have four times color balance and one layers at the top. So now let's move all the color balance tools into scrollable area. So let's set this for the first one, for the second, for the third. So now we have four color balance tools in the scrollable area and we can open layers. It is in the pinned area, which means that this one will stay fixed while we will have easy access to our four tools. And the reason why I have created four color balance tools is that now I can access independently shadows, mid-tones and highlights at the same time and I can set the last tool to master. So now it gives me very quick overview. I can see clearly how I have affected the chosen luminosity range and this is really helpful when you are working on color grading with color balance tool. Once you have the workspace ready, you can move over to window in, and in workspace you can save your workspace so it will be available in the future if you want to color grade your images and if you don't want to repeat all these steps again. So now let's take a closer look at the tool itself. So the color balance tool has been separated into the three components of the image based on luminosity ranges. So we have shadows, we have mid-tones and we have highlights. And in each of the tools, you can intuitively adjust hue with the color wheel, saturation with the slider position to the left and lightness with the slider position to the right. Okay, so let's see how the color balance tool is working in action. I'm going to create a color grading for this image and I will be doing this on a layer. So I'm going to add new field layer and I will rename it to color grading. So when it comes to color grading, the most classic color grading is based on injecting cool shade in the shadows and warming up the highlights. So that way we would create a color contrast in the image and we would create a sense of depth. But I'm going to create a warm color grading for this image. So I will be working mostly with warm tones. So let's first add a little bit of warm tone inside the shadow luminosity range. 
So to do this, I need to just click inside the hue area and drag the circle cursor towards the shade that I'm after. So this is very intuitive. You can play around. You can check how selected color, selected hue is affecting your image. So since I want to go for warm look, I will be going towards adding some reds, some color between the red and magenta into the shadow range. So to add a color tint, or in other words, to adjust hue in your images, work with the color wheel, notice that the more I go towards the edge of the color wheel, the stronger is the saturation of the selected hue. And if I go in the opposite direction towards the middle of the circle, I'm decreasing saturation. If you want to be super precise, once you have selected the little circle cursor, you can operate with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So now I'm using the upward pointing arrow on my keyboard and I'm increasing saturation, or if I go the other way, I'm decreasing saturation. So you can do this either by moving the circle inside the hue tool, inside the color wheel, or you can do this just by using this slider and the same going upwards will be increasing the saturation level. And if you go downwards, you will decrease saturation level of the selected hue and the right slider is responsible for lightness. So if you would like to affect lightness or brightness inside the selected luminosity range, now we are working with shadows, you can push the, the handle upwards, so this will brighten the shadows in my image, and if I move it downwards, this will darken shadows in my image. This is very important to remember that these sliders are designed in a way that they are affecting the selected luminosity range. So when I'm adjusting the hue inside the selected color range, shadow range in this case, the algorithm is blocking the adjustments from other luminosity ranges. So it is blocking midtones and highlights. If I would be working with the highlights, then I will be limited to the highlights luminosity range. So that way you can super precisely work with color inside selected luminosity range. Okay, so we have added some red into our shadows. Let's now move over and warm up a little of the midtone. So I'm going to select the circle and push it towards the yellows. So let's observe the image in the viewer and let's select some pleasing tone. I think something around here will be fine. I don't want to oversaturate it, so let's just pick the hue and then we can fine tune the saturation with the slider that is responsible only for saturation. And when it comes to the highlights, I'm going to experiment and add a touch of a cool color to create a nice color contrast. So maybe something between the cyans and greens. Okay, so we have created our warm look for the image. We can now take a look and have a preview before and after, either by switching off the layer. Remember, if you will now assess that the adjustment is a little bit too strong, you can now manipulate with the opacity of the layer, so you can make the effect a little bit more transparent, or you can still get back and adjust either shadows, midtones, or highlights when it comes to all the three aspects. You can adjust hue, you can adjust saturation and luminosity. To get a preview, you can as well alt click on the reset arrow. Remember to hold the alt key because this will give you the temporary preview without resetting the adjustment. Okay, let's now for a contrast quickly create a cool look for the image. So I'm going to switch off this layer and add another one, new field layer, and this one I will call color grading 2. So in this case, I will go for cool colors and let's start from the shadows. I'm going to add a touch of a blue to the shadows. Let's go for a value around here, maybe less magenta. Let's adjust saturation. Let's now move over to the midtones, and here I will add a little bit more blues, but more towards the cyan shade. So something around here to really cool the midtones, to cool the skin tones. Okay, so let's go for this value, and when it comes to the highlights, I will cool the highlights. So let's go 
either for more cyan or maybe something either more greenish, maybe at lower saturation. So let's now adjust it with saturation slider. So this is at strong saturation value and this is at lower setting. And if you like, you can go for a stronger look and manipulate with the master tab. The master tab will simply adjust all luminosity ranges. So if I still add a little bit more of cyan, this will be injected into all luminosity ranges. And in a way, I will be adding a color cast. So this will flatten the image. Injecting different colors, different hues into different luminosity ranges, I'm creating more depth in the image. So now if I add with the master tab the same hue across all luminosity ranges, it will simply subdue the contrast that I have created. So sometimes it works. You can, of course, experiment. You can quickly check and you can decide if your image is benefiting from operating with the master tab or not. I think in case of this image, I won't use this. So I'm going to reset the hue tool. Okay, so super quick, we have created the second look for our image and we can now take a quick preview. This is the image before the adjustments and this is the image with the first warm look. This is the image with the second look, the cold look. Now we can activate the first color grading and now both of the styles were mixed together. So let's get back to our browser and I'm going to simply create clone variant. And on this one, I will be switching off the first color grading. Let's create another clone variant. On this one, I will activate the first one. And let's create quickly another one. And on this one, I will switch of all my color grading. So let's display the three images one beside another. I hope that after watching this quick exercise on color grading an image with the color balance tool, you can see its beauty. I hope you are convinced by now that this tool is really super effective, super intuitive, and you can work in a fun way when you are adjusting color and its intensity. And to finish this video on color grading with the color balance tool, I would like to say a few words on finding inspiration for color grading. So I would recommend using tools such as Pinterest. So you can type in something like color grading inspiration. You can scroll down and you can search for images that you like. So let's say I would like to take a look at this one. And here I can see more color grading ideas. So if I like, let's say this sort of color grading. So now I can right click on the image and save it to my hard drive. And once the image was saved on my hard drive, I can display it in Capture One. So I have found the image on my hard drive. I can display it in my viewer and I can move it into the session album where I was working on color balance. So now I can have the image displayed at the bottom. So once the image is sitting inside my session, I can now take a look at one of my color grading variants beside the image that I have found online. So let's maybe hide the tools to have a little bit more of space. And that way you can just simply have a preview for experimenting, you can investigate colors. You can take a look at the color readouts visible here and you can, for example, compare the numbers for the shadow range. So here you can see that the shadows are on a cool side. We have five for greens, eight for the blues. And let's say I want to compare with this one. So I have zero for greens and four for the blues. So that way you can work with images found online and you can get some inspiration, some ideas when it comes to color grading, when you are working on your own photos. I want you to remember about one more tool that is easily accessible online. I'm talking about the color wheel that you can find at Adobe's website. I'm going to paste this link inside the description of this lesson. So here with this super useful and free tool, you can experiment with different color harmonies. So with the middle circle, you can pick your selected color. So this will be your target color, the one that is displayed here in the sample in the middle. And then you can 
change different color harmony. So now we are working with the first analogous. This is monochromatic triad complementary. So if we get back to the image that we have saved from the internet, we can see that it was based, the color grading of this image was based on the complementary color harmony, because we have cyans, those grayish cyans, cool tones against the yellows and those nice, beautiful, warm skin tones. So we have a bit of a yellow, we have a bit of cyan, and this creates this beautiful, harmonious effect. So if you combine the Pinterest with the color wheel, you can create really powerful and really beautiful artwork. So as always, it takes a bit of experimenting, but playing around with this color wheel is a really fun. You can explore the website. So here you can take a look at some different color themes, at some different color harmonies created by other users. Okay, so in this clip, we've been talking about color grading images with the color balance tool. I hope you feel inspired and I hope you can see how powerful are those tools related to colors in Capture One and how easily and intuitively you can work when it comes to color grading and applying it to your own artwork.